What's good, y'all boys? Welcome back again to another video. Listen, if you're like me and you were up yesterday, last night, watching the first Republican debate for twenty for the twenty twenty four election, um, you probably saw that it was it was pretty entertaining. Okay, it was pretty entertaining and very telling. There's a couple things that were shown that I already kind of suspected based on how people were acting, but they were shown to be true. Okay, um, what I'm seeing a lot is that. People think Vivek won, Vivek won, um, and all the other people kind of look like clowns, right? And they kind of look like super packed puppets, they, puppets. they kind of look like, you know, career politicians. Everyone except for DeSantis focused on, almost everyone except for DeSantis focused on attacking Vivek. And, you know, Krispy Kreme, Chris Christie, um, that lady, Nikki Haley, wouldn't even let him talk, was screaming over what he was saying, but still got a roaring applause. He came out looking the best. Unless if you ask like a like a, a liberal or a Democrat, or whatever, they're not gonna think so. But you know, if you ask David Pakman, he's not gonna think so. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's really funny if you if you see some of the footage that we're gonna see right now. Uh, Black conservative perspective seems like he put together a lot of the clips that I was gonna do. Um, so we're just gonna react to what he his his journalism on it. Yeah, shout out Black conservative perspective, bro, because he's he's so quick with this shit, bro. Here's what I want to ask you about who you thought did the best during this debate. Basically, who do you think won Look at the this. debate? I'm going to do it in alphabetical order to be fair. Anyone think Doug Burgum did the best? That's zero. Anyone think Chris Christie did the best? He certainly got most of the airtime. Zero. A lot of the airtime, not most of the airtime. How about Ron DeSantis? How many of you think Ron DeSantis? It's funny that, and this is from CNN. This is CNN. Yes, that's two people. How about Nikki Haley? One, two, three, four people. Asa Hutchinson? Mike Pence? Yikes. Zero. Vivek Ramaswamy? Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tim Scott? Okay, so this panel here thinks Ramaswamy won the debate. Tell me why you think he won the debate. I was reminded of the time when Vivek was talking about the national identity situation. And uh, I know Pence brought up that uh, that wasn't really an issue, but I think it was a generational it's problem. It's definitely an issue. Vivek. Yeah, when I was watching it and Mike Pence kept trying to reiterate that, no, it's not an issue. There's no American identity problem. That's fucking cap, bro. You know how many people, especially like my age, for example, but like younger people, you know how many people be like, oh, you know, America sucks. America is this. America is that. America is a terrible place. Yada, yada, yada. People are not proud to be American, okay? That's, you know, just for Mike Pence to be up there saying, oh, there's no American identity problem, that's complete cap. You know, but he's an old ass dude. Like, of course, he don't he don't know shit, bro. <laughs> he's an old ass motherfucker, bro. He know what he know, and he don't know what he don't know. It is what it is. Nick understands that young folks don't really understand that people my age don't really love America, and if you don't love it, you can't protect it. And I think if we fix that problem, then people will, as a as a natural byproduct, want to protect America and what it stands for. Mm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now, mm. I want to thank everybody who joined me last night to live stream the Fox News GOP debate. Okay, oh, he it, it was very entertaining and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Where did he live stream it at? Because I was looking, I couldn't find, the only people I saw live stream on YouTube was Steven Crowder and uh, David Pacman. What, did he live stream on, he has, he has a Twitch or something? Okay, and uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, everyone's performance, Vic, Vivek did good. I think he stumbled a little bit, but he kept it going, right? Um, when Nikki Haley was trying to attack him for or on the foreign policy. But she just wouldn't let him talk, though. But he still got a sounding ovation anyway. Um, DeSantis did okay, but he didn't really answer any tough questions. And a lot of it ended up looking like he was just, you know, copying Vivek. And he was scared to, you know, really say what he really thought for real. Chris Christie, you know, uh, you know, you know, very regular average politician. Um, I think some people would describe him as a rhino, Republican in name only. I don't know, whatever. Uh... Those two other guys that just I don't care about, they was boring, whatever. Tim Scott, eh. Who else? Mike Pence. Mike Pence was okay, but still old ass dude. Didn't know what he was talking about for real. Uh outdated. Um and other than that, you know. Mm. Uh, this is my recap video. I'm probably gonna do maybe a couple recap videos today of the debate. Uh, because there is a lot to kind of pick apart and break apart no in regards to no what was discussed during that debate. But I guess the first video of the day should kind of be about, well, who won the debate? Well, besides Trump, okay, who I think won, 
uh, the night, and I'll tell you guys why in probably another video. In regards to the debate itself, um, no cap, Trump wasn't even there, and yet they kept talking about him. They kept bringing him up. They kept talking about him. Ben Ramaswamy, I think, was just absolutely a star. He was on fire the whole night. And he essentially ended Chris Christie's career on stage. And it became clear as the night went on that the politicians on stage knew who the alpha dog was on stage and who is the number one enemy outside of Trump for them to try to take down. Clearly, it has become Vivek Ramaswamy. There will be a target <laughs> on his back. And it is because of exchanges like this in which the politicians were asked if they would support Trump uh, if he's convicted yeah, of he, any he, of the this clip, this clip right here he's about to show. Him. You all signed a pledge to support the eventual Republican nominee. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. Yeah, I'm quick. Look, y'all saw that? Look, 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 look. look. Watch this. Vivek, boom. Boom, Nikki. Boom, Tim Scott. Boom, that guy. DeSantis looking. Up, oh, and then Mike Pence. Up, oh, and then Chris Christie. Uh, and he did this. Then he shook his head. And then he. Just hold on. And the other guy at the end didn't do it. I think his name is Asa Hutchinson. I don't know. So why the hell? I don't know what Chris Christie was doing. But isn't that funny? Vivek. <laughs> it goes to show you everything this dude been saying. He's been very consistent what he's saying. I was scrolling on Twitter and some people were like, "Oh no, I, Vivek, I can't trust him. He he flip flops on his points a lot." I mean, I've been watching some. I've been following him a little bit, bro. I haven't seen him flip flop or anything, bro. The most I've seen him do was, uh, you know, explain more detail of the stuff he's talking about. But I've never seen him flip flop. I haven't seen him flip flop on uh, abortion. I haven't seen him flip flop on. Uh, the climate change agenda, right? That's something that people try to get him for. Oh, he says climate change is a hoax. No, he said the agenda is a hoax. The things that they're trying to push on people as if we're us individuals are the main cause of climate change. He's saying that's a hoax. But, you know, people don't know. People only hear what they hear and they don't dive in for more. They read a headline and they don't dig in deeper. So just to be clear, Governor Christie, you were kind of late Wait, to the game yeah. there, but no, you raised I'm, your I'm, hand. No, I'm doing this. Look. <laughs> Look, I'm doing this. And I know this. you didn't. Whoa, whoa. No. Come, what's and the look, I, what, 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 look, here's the, here's the bottom line. Someone's got to stop normalizing this conduct. Okay? Now, and now whether or not, whether or not you believe that the criminal charges are right or wrong, the conduct is beneath the office of President of the United States. And, and, mm. and, you know, this is the great thing about this country. Booing is allowed, but it doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the truth. <laughs> you raised your hand supporting. No. I'd like to okay. get in and respond. Let's just speak the truth, okay? President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. It's a fact. Chris Christie, honest to God, your claim that Donald Trump is motivated by was he? I don't know. I don't. I don't really have an opinion on that. I don't know. By vengeance and grievance would be a lot more. He definitely was the most attacked one, but he did definitely did say crazy stuff. Credible. If your entire campaign were not based on vengeance and grievance <laughs> against one man, and if people at home want to see a bunch of people blindly bashing. Donald Trump without an iota of vision for this country. They could just change the channel to MSNBC right now. That's one thing I do like about Vivek, because these other people, they in the Democrats, but they focus on Trump this, Trump that, Trump bad, yada, 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 yada. When Trump was president, they talked about this man every single day. Every day they talk about this man, bro. Y'all not tired? Y'all not tired of this shit, bro? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear Trump, 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 Trump. I don't care, bro. What y'all doing for the country? What y'all doing for us? What you doing for me? Okay? <laughs> That's what I want to hear. And all the people I heard, DeSantis gives non-answers. He don't really dive deep in the shit. And he don't really be out there on a press run. Vivek is the one who says what he wants to do and the reasoning behind it and how he would do it. And yeah, you know, that's a good thing to hear. As someone like me, I have to hear what you want to do and how you're going to do it and why you're doing it. Makes sense to me. 
If it makes sense, cool. If it don't make sense, I'm going to say I don't fuck with that. You know what I'm saying? Just like when he said the shit about Juneteenth, I didn't agree with him. But there's other shit that he, he said that I agree with. You know what I'm saying? Like the way he said about the Department of Education and putting that money back in the pockets of the parents and school choice. That sounds good to me. And I feel like that would help a lot of black people. But I'm not running for president of MSNBC. I am running for president of the United States. We're skating on thin ice and we cannot set a precedent where the party in power uses police force to indict its political opponents. It is wrong. Governor we have Scott to end the seconds. weponization of yeah. justice in this country. 30 30 seconds, seconds. Governor DeSantis. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let me take no, no, I'm sorry. You, 30 seconds, Governor You make me laugh because Go, you, go sit, you, sit, you sit here in an answer. You sit here in an answer right You sit here and answer. Go ahead, Hold Governor on. Christie. Hold on, Governor Christie. Hold on. Um, <laughs> yeah. So listen. Yeah, so that is Barry Ramaswamy calling out Chris Christie and his <laughs> fake campaign for what it is, okay? The whole thing is essentially a crusade against Trump. He know he has no chance in hell of winning, okay? He has no chance at all of actually becoming a nominee, but Thanks. he's running anyways playing tough guy for a show on MSNBC or CNN, okay? That's what Facts. he's actually really gunning Facts. for, okay? And just like when it comes to his exchanges with Trump, uh, Chris Christie has bitten off more than what he can chew, which is, again, a very rare thing for Chris Christie to do. Um, and he went out to <laughs> Barry Ramaswamy and Ramaswamy destroyed him. Again, that's not the only exchange uh, in this debate between gonna show the other ones? and Christy that got okay. very, very, very heated. Christy also lost his cool uh, when Vivek Ramaswamy called out all the politicians on stage for being bought and Puppets, paid for, which yep. they are, right? They are bought yep. and paid for. Like, I swear, somebody hired this man, put some bread in this man's pocket, Chris, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme Christy, to, uh, you know, go on here and just rally against Trump to, you know, to add, because if it wasn't him, it would have been somebody else. You know what I mean? They definitely put some money in his pocket to do that shit. And Chris Christie didn't like that. People are dying of bad climate change policy. I, man, I still wish Larry, Larry Elder was on here, though, because you know what I'm saying? I don't even know him like that, but after the Breakfast Club show, I want to see him and see what he would have said in this situation. But they didn't want that boy on here, boy. They already had one black and one Indian. That's enough people of color. And they had one woman, they met their quotas, okay? Policies than they are of actual climate okay. change. Governor, Governor Haley, are you bought the paid for? Down by hold on, hold on. Look, listen, look, listen, listen. Had a, no, Let, wait, no, hold no. on, hold I've on. I've had enough. I've had enough. Well, he mad already what? tonight. Big boy, of mad. A guy who sounds like Chat GPT standing up here. <laughs> and the last person in one of these debates, Brett, who stood in the middle of the stage and said. What's a skinny guy with an odd last name doing up here was Barack Obama, and I'm afraid we're dealing with the same type of amateur well, Chris, standing on stage tonight. Come over and give me a hug. <laughs> give me a hug just same, like you did to Obama. The same type of amateur. And, and you'll help elect me just the, like you did to Obama, too. Give me that The same hug, type of amateur. Hey, Richard, got, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, so you see that, you're hearing that. Okay, Chris Christie, he tried the tough guy shtick against Bevick, and clearly it didn't work, Okay. Uh, I think that Chris Christie, he, he's way in over his head when it comes to trying to go out to Vivek, just like he's in over his head trying to go out to Trump. Uh, again, part of me wishes Trump was on stage to also go out to Chris Christie, but honestly, Vivek Ramaswamy basically stood up on his own, right? He didn't really need any help, anything like that. He took on all these guys, okay? And there's a mo another moment of the debate that I want to play. Uh -huh. That I think is the reason why this guy won and what is really differentiating him from everybody else on stage. I think I know what talking about. It might be when Mike Pence went at him. Which it might is be that. his uh, ability to be unafraid to say things that these other politicians won't say. Or, or it's about the foreign policy. Uh, take positions that other politicians won't take. Like, for example, when it came to the question about whether or not... Uh, any one of these guys would continue to fund the war in Ukraine. Um, I want you to pay attention to who says yes and who says no. Take a look. Watch, watch, watch. The administration is now asking Congress for $24 billion more. Regardless, 
of that, the specific specifics of that plan, is there anyone on stage who would not support the increase of more funding to Ukraine? We would, would not support it. Europe needs to step up. I mean, uh, to Ukraine. We would, would not Europe, support it. Europe needs to step up. Look at the census. The census stuttering. Vivek, Vivek, no stutter, no hesitation. No. <laughs> More Listen, funding. Europe needs to step up to Ukraine. We would, would not Europe, support it. Europe needs to step up. I mean, I, I would have Europe step up and do their job. Right, Mr. Ramaswamy. I would not support it. He don't care. But this is what I'm supposed to do, bro. All right, bro, he don't care. He's going to say what he got to say. Where do you think it's right or wrong? He's standing on it. Ten toes down. That's, I can respect that. Now, a lot of people have problems with that. Oh, you know. Because you're just going to let Russia take over Ukraine, da 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 When he explained it, it didn't sound like it's just letting Russia take over U Ukraine. Um, but that's how they were trying to spin it off rip. But, you know, a lot of people make money off of war. Republican and Democrat alike. A lot of these people make money off of war. So, I wouldn't be surprised if there's certain agendas. You know, I'm not going to speak on like his facts because I don't have the information. I'm just speculating. But, you know what I mean? It's something that worth looking into. That's worth looking into. But you're saying you would not too, Governor DeSantis? I will have Europe to pit, pull their weight. Uh, right would, now they're not doing you that. Would not support and I think we need to do, and, and I think our support should be contingent on them doing it. And I would have support in China uh, to be able to take uh, to be able to take China um, and do what we need to do with China. Mr. Ramaswamy, you would not support an increase of funding to Ukraine. I would not. And I think that this is disastrous that we are protecting against an invasion across somebody else's border when we should use those same military resources to prevent across the invasion of our own southern border here in the United States of America. Mm. We're driving Russia further into China's hands. The Russia-China alliance is the single greatest threat we face. When um, And it is funny that, you know, no one's ever... Like, I don't see any serious handling of the border crisis, right? When he said this, and I was watching David Pakman's stream, he was like, you know, he couldn't even really refute what he was saying. He was just like, oh, that's a very controversial uh, take. Uh, you know, a lot of experts say that's very controversial to you. If, if we could use our own defense military on the southern border, that's very controversial. I'm like, that's all you got to say? <laughs> that is controversial? Okay, and? Is it legally sound or legally not sound? Is there a problem with it? Do you think the issue that's coming from the southern border is a serious issue or not? All the drugs that's coming through, all the criminals that are coming through, all the illegal immigrants that are coming through, that's a problem. They're illegal immigrants, bro. And some of them are criminals. Some of them are not. But some of them are. A lot of people are getting hurt just to try to get through there unsafe and sound. Meanwhile, there's people that's trying to do it the right way, the legal way, that's getting pushed back and they have to wait even longer because someone want to skip the line. It is what it is. And I find it offensive that we have professional politicians on the stage that will make a pilgrimage to Kiev, to their Pope, Zelensky, without doing the same thing for people in Maui or the south side of Chicago okay. right, or right. Kensington. Okay. I Facts, I see no politicians over there in Maui except for Biden, eventually. I saw Oprah over there, but it looked like she was in a nice area. I Hold think on. that we have to put oh, the man. interests of Americans I mean, first. He was secure our own border instead of somebody else's. He was referring. And the reality is, this is also how we project okay. strength and by making America strong at home. Thank you. Right. Yeah, so I'm probably going to get deeper into that exchange in another video as well, too. But just for this video, I, I want you guys to notice the same type of pattern that you saw in the first clip that you also see in the second clip. Okay, mm -hmm. when it comes to taking tough positions, Becky Ramaswamy is the only person on stage that was willing to do so mm -hmm. in a way that was confident. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, Ron DeSantis, when asked about um, supporting Trump, he looked around on stage to see what other people would say before actually raising his hand. Right? Yeah, that's crazy, Which, bro. I mean, shows that... That's some little kid shit, boy. Show you're not confident, boy. You don't look like the leader of the free world. He's timid. He don't really know what to say. Okay? He doesn't really have a real position on it. He really wants to say, no, I don't want to support the guy. That's what he really wants to say. Uh, and that showed up clear. Just like in this exchange right here when we're talking about sending more money to Ukraine. 
Ron DeSantis, once again, being timid, he sees that Bevick raised his hand and he kind of does a halfway thing and then gives a halfway answer talking about, well, you're a piece of pain. Right. You're a piece of pulling away. Pull which I agree. Right. I agree with. But that doesn't really have anything to do with what we're doing, whether or not we want to continue to send more money. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, fast, it's, it, this is why Vivek is just he's doing better than DeSantis. Right. Or he's about to overtake DeSantis. I did a whole video yesterday responding to Ben Shapiro uh, and his analysis on why Ron DeSantis is losing in which I, I disagree with his analysis. I think that he seems to believe that. Well, it's I didn't see that. We should check that out. Check that out. I didn't see. I really seen Ben Shapiro comment too much on stuff. Matter of fact, I kind of want to look at his Twitter. Let's. I want to see what Ben. Yeah, let's see what Ben Shapiro has, been, has said. We'll come back to the video. I just want to see what he said. Okay, here's more recent. Everybody on stage basically accomplished his or her goal last night. DeSantis avoided the fire. Vivek gained attention. Haley picked up steam in the traditional GOP lane. Christie solidified the Never Trump lane. Pence defended his legacy, and Trump is still forty points ahead. Meanwhile, Trump did a complete softball interview with Tucker and paid no price for it. So there's that. Right now, there are four lanes in the GOP. Here are some rough estimates. Trumpers, ride or die, 35%. Traditional GOP, Reaganite, conservatives who like Trump but are waited to him, 25%. Never Trumpers, 20%. Trump adjacent, like him but could vote for someone else, 20%. For anyone to beat Trump, they have to lock up the Never Trumpers, 80% of the traditional GOP, and half of the Trump adjacent. DeSantis is still the only candidate with some level of support in all three lanes, but each lane has a current obstacle for him to overcome. Haley, Scott, Pence. Less about what DeSantis is doing, right, or, you know, the mistakes that he's making, and it's more about the fact that, well, Bevick is willing to say whatever to get votes or whatever. And, you know, it's funny because there's a lot of criticism of Bevick Ramaswamy, and they try to make the guy seem like he's inauthentic, and I'm like, where are people getting this from? Because the guy... At least it's been documented he's been a libertarian type since high school. And people want to mm -hmm. criticize him for not voting. And I'm like, well, a lot of libertarian types don't vote, right? Yeah. Because there aren't many libertarians. In the He didn't show the clip. But in the debate, Mike Pence tried to bring it up. Like last minute, right before they cut to a commercial break. Oh, well, why didn't you vote? Why didn't you vote? But they, they drowned him out. Cause like, bro, shut up, bro. Who cares? That are in these national races. Okay? I mean, again, that's... A normal thing right and you know he did vote for Trump I'm trying to figure out why people think the guy is fake okay I mean, if anything he has a lot more to lose by coming out here and supporting Trump and running for president and taking these positions and saying the things he's saying than he has to gain because That's the chance of him actually beating Trump is slim to none he's coming out here saying all these things that after he finished running for president uh, he's going to have some issues, okay? I mean, don't get me wrong. The dude is damn near a billionaire, but still, right? Some people, if he don't win, you know, after this, some a lot of people going to look him crazy, bro. They're going to look him but crazy. But still, um, it's not necessarily good for his wallet. The same way it wasn't necessarily good for Trump's wallet to run. I'm trying to figure out why people think he's inauthentic, right? I'm really trying to figure that out. Because just like Trump, uh, there is no real financial incentive for this guy to come out here and to say the things he's saying and to do the things he's doing considering the current political climate. There is no incentive whatsoever. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what people think that he's trying to get out of this outside of, you know, legitimately wanting to be president of the United States. Again, he's saying things on stage that, uh, you know, once he stops running, once this is done and over with, it's, it's going to follow him, Okay. The, the, the powers that be aren't going to like some of the positions that he's taken, right? But again, back to my main point in regards to that clip right there. Again, that is why Bevick is gaining steam on DeSantis. That's why he's lapping all of these guys because clearly he's smarter than all of them. Clearly, <laughs> he actually has policy positions. He actually answers questions unlike all of these other guys on stage. And mm -hmm. he's not afraid to take... Uh, a stance on tough questions. That's facts. Right? It's really that simple. Right? That, that whether you like it or not, that's something you got to respect. I never really see Republicans do that shit, and I never really see Democrats do that shit. You know what I mean? So, it is what it is, bro. DeSantis is being timid. And again, I don't think Ron DeSantis had a bad performance. I don't think he did anything bad. I just don't think he did anything spectacular. I don't think he did anything great. I don't think he necessarily helped himself. 
And the reason why is because he simply just seems like a timid politician. He seems. But that's the video. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think Vivek won the debate or the Krispy Kreme Christian win the debate? <laughs> We're gonna have more coverage on this debate coming soon. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. And hit the notification button down below. And shout out Black Conservative Perspective, Greg Foreman. You feel me? Peace out.